Hi, this is Chris Schomburg, and this is an attempt to go ahead and start trying to think of how to actually make a robot from scratch. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to follow a form and then kind of decide to build from there. Now the, the form that I have is actually right here, and I'm going to maximize it. It is about how to actually design a motor to turn on and turn off. Essentially, you're just giving a, a high pin and a low pin to the motor. That's really all you're doing. And uh, so I'm going to follow the form of how to do this. Again, there is actual code for this too, because this can actually stop the motor when you hit the toggle button. So if we look at that, if we look at the equation or the the code here, we're seeing that if we have we have a pin dedicated to the motor and the motor output, we have a pin dedicated to the button and the button input. So the button input, this button right here is going to right here which is one of the inputs there so if we look at the button input um, that is actually the motor is pin 5 the button is uh, 7 so I believe it is pin 7 that we're gonna go ahead and put that to and so that's really what's happening is that you're actually now designing a controller so a brain for a motor to actually run so this this is just one motor. Keep in mind if we did two, then we might be able to have a start of a robot. The third ro wheel could just be a roller, which just rolls. So typically you can have at least, you need at least two motors to get a robot to work. Four would be ideal. In this case, we're just going to be doing two. But this, and in this case itself, if we just follow this form, we just get one. So we'll go ahead, we'll follow the form first. So we're going to follow the form first and we're going to design this to spec. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with that. So start with what we know. So what we know is we are going to need a breadboard. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull out a breadboard. There we go. We have now a breadboard. Okay, instead of a battery, we're going to have the Arduino, which could be battery powered. So we'll put that up here. It's just on a little bit of a delay. There we go. So we have an Arduino and we have a breadboard. Now we need a motor and looks like a 1 kilo kil ohm resistor and a. Um, this guy is our push button. So we're going to need a push button, a 1 kilo ohm resistor. So let's go. Here's the push button. Here's the 1 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, then we need a motor. And that might require us to change. So we could just put in this motor. I'd rather not. I'd actually, let's see if, let's see if there are some other motors. See if there's a better motor to put in here. Well, they have a hobby motor and they have just this guy. So let's actually just put this guy in there. There we go. Not seeing better motors than that. So we'll keep with that. And now what we're going to do, I know this is not the best way of doing things, but we're going to start with that. We're going to just start with what we know. We're going to keep copy this code in and I'll put this in the okay I'll put this in the video so that you have that uh, in the comment section and so let's go ahead and let's go to the code we want in this case we want text continue we're going to delete that we're going to put this in and okay so there we go now we know we need pin 5 and pin 7 so we're going to go ahead, we're going to close the code. There we go. Now, we're just going to follow form here. So this right here is 5 volts. So we're going to draw 5 volt, or no, don't there. Want 5 volts right there. And then they just went to the rail. So I'm just going to go to the rail. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit just so that it's a little bit nicer. Let's go ahead and then go to ground. See, I just want to make sure. I think that's actually looks like it's yeah, it's ground right here. So we're gonna go from here to ground. 
Okay, now what we want to do is we want to make that black. We we'll make the first one red. Okay, so we have both VN on the positive rail and we have black as the negative rail, so that is the ground rail. Okay, now simply we're going to follow form again. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to put, doesn't really matter where you put this, I'm going to put it in the first one, just or the second one, just so that it makes it's, it's easier space-wise. So then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go from red all the way up to here. And so typically you don't actually need to go all the way up because these are in the same line, so you could tap to take it just to there, and you could just go red like that. And then we need our resistor, so I'm going to rotate that. Okay, and then we're going to go from the output, which is right here. We're going to, so this is the input, this is the output of our toggle switch. We're then going to go to ground. So from here, I'm actually just going to go from here to here to save on wire. There we go. Okay, then the last thing that we need to do is we need to take an output pin. And in this case, I think we, we talked about 5 and 7, so let's make sure we know which one's which. So it looks like the button is 7 and the motor is 5. So if we look up here, well, well let's actually just go, yeah, let's, let's, let's actually close this guy. Let's open this all the way, window-wise. Zoom out. There we go. Okay, so this is 7, so this is our push button. So I'm going to go from the pu push button, this pin, and I'm going to keep it green because why not? Okay, so I'm not going to, I guess I could click here just so that it's nice and formatted nicely. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to actually want it to go directly to the output pin. So I could either go here or I could go here. And I'm going to consult. So I'm going to actually hit escape and let's just consult our diagram one more time. Okay, so they go to the actual output pin instead of to the ground pin. And that's kind of interesting because it's like they do it at both. But I think this is just turning and that's not actually touching. So what we can do then is we can go here, we can go from 7, right? Go up, go over, go straight. Again, I'm clicking at each of these locations so that it's a little bit nicer. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. So that goes into our 7 pin. Now, we said the 5 pin is the motor. Now, the question is, is that ground or, or high? So let's go ahead, let's consult, consult it one more time. So if we look here, this is going in here, this is going to one of the pins, and, uh, and then this one is going to the high... Okay, so that's the ground pin. This one's the ground pin. This is the high pin. It's going to the, the high pin. Okay, so we answered that. So we're, we can go like this, and we're going to go... I'm going to go over, over. Uh, I'm going to actually cut it a little short, and then go like here, and then click in. Okay, now I'm going to make that red. Good. Okay. Now the ground pin is going to go all the way down to ground. Okay, we'll make that black. All right, let's consult just to make sure. All right, so that did go down to ground. That one. Okay, so they didn't go directly to it. They actually used the breadboard. All right, let's test it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, then we know probably we need an intermediate pin. Uh, and why that could be is maybe a floating ground or something like that. But let's just test it and see. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, let's hit the button. Okay, it is starting. And we hit the button again, it stops. Hit the button, it starts. Hit the button again, it stops. Okay, great. Okay, so we followed the form. We followed it right. We got the right answer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to just put uh, so one is then you'd look at your code and you'd say okay so what did we actually do what we did here is we we have a pin seven and a pin five right the pin five is our motor the pin seven is our button 
And essentially, what we did, and we can look at the code because they're really nice and they actually wrote it all out. Um, so you can either st st store a status of on or off. So either an on or an off pin, which is just a zero or a one. And so that's the state that's doing that. And so basically what we look down here, okay, so what is the state right here? If state is equal to one, then the motor is turned to 255. Okay, else the motor is equal to zero. Now, if we go back up, we can see that basically the, it's reading a digital read from the button, okay? So when the button is pin seven is turned hot, is turned on, it changes the state to one, which then turns the motor to 255. Okay, so now it's less of a robotics thing and more of a programming thing that we're moving into, okay? Because honestly, let's do one step just robotically or electronically, and then you'll see how this is getting closer and closer to a real robot. So let's go ahead. Let's d take out that code. Okay, let's just duplicate these motors, right? So copy, paste, okay. And let's just rotate it for the sake of just my point. Okay. Now let's, let's zoom this out a little bit so we can see all the pins. Okay. Now let's actually say that we want the motors to go together at the same time. So let's go ahead Let's move this guy right here and make it black. All right, make it look good. We'll make it be black and then we'll make this one red. And we're gonna go over like this. All right, so let's see if I can now Okay, I could put two on the same pin there, or I could actually just, let's do this. Let's delete that one. Let's delete this red one. Okay, and let's go like here, and let's go to an intermediate pin. So I'm just going to go to this pin right there. Let's look at it. It is, let's actually go again. Okay, so let's go at... From the red down to the terminal, let's actually just go to 30, J30 right there. That's red. Okay, take this guy, let's go over like that, and then let's go up and let's go F30. Okay, and we have a red. Okay, so now we have two motors attached to the same thing. And then we're going to go ahead, we're going to go from H, let's go out, let's go around, zoom out. And actually, I want to do that, but I want to zoom this guy in so that I can see the whole thing. All right, so let's go from 5. There we go. Bring this again in, over, right about there, and then we go right into H. Or how about I? I is a little easier to get into. Okay. So then we have turn that one to red. Okay. So now the red, this power, this button should turn on both of the motors at the same time. Let's move this up like that. It's starting to look a little bit like a robot. Okay, they're both at zero RPM. We hit the button. And nothing happens. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. All right, it is going. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's working. I don't know why it didn't work before. It just wasn't hitting the button properly. But now if we zoom in. This one's going up to a very high RPM. This one right here is going up to a very high RPM. There we go. So it's basically getting a high pin. A high means motor turns, 
and both motors are turning at the same time. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, this is great. If I had a third wheel that just r rolled, it would go forward. So we would have a robot that just moves forward. Yes, we just built a robot from scratch using our Arduino and motors and a toggle switch and one resistor to go forward. <laughs> that exact, that's exactly what we designed. Um, for the next session, we'll go ahead and try to make this a little bit further. We'll try to actually uh, design robots that can actually do a little bit more maneuvering and things like that. Uh, but from this point on, it's just a code thing, and you'd actually have to then build the robot. Um, but this is, you know, the starts to building a robot from scratch.